Christ. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. For your love gift of $15 or more, the Word Network will send you this elegant silver crown necklace. This elaborate design is covered in sparkling rhinestones and hung on a beautiful link chain. Crowns are mentioned throughout the Bible, representing royalty, honor, status, anointing, and an inheritance from the Lord. 1 Peter 5.4 says, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Wear this stunning necklace as a reminder of your faith and eternal promise from the Lord. Call to order yours now, and it makes a perfect gift for family and friends. Call 855-730-WORD. That's 855-730-9673. Thank you for your generous support for the Word Network. Because of you, we're able to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Pastor David Ibiame, only on the Word Network. You're watching the largest African-American religious network in the world. We are The Word Network. This is a Word Network special presentation. Presentation. Get ready for Medina Pullings Live. today are bringing the fire, fire, fire. Somebody say fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, today we are just going to run. Somebody say run. We're going to run into the more of God. We just want God to have his way. God has a breakthrough for you. The Lord is going to speak to you. We want to know what God is doing. What is he up to? Yes. Somebody say, I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. Well, if you want to know and you want to be in the know, stay tuned and stay connected because our guests on today are going to bring the word of the Lord to you. There is such a demand. There is such a demand for the people of God. Yes, the earth, all of creation is waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God, waiting on you to walk in your purpose, to walk in your destiny. And I'm here to tell you, hallelujah, that there is a sudden promotion that is coming your way suddenly, just like that. And some of you have been experiencing uh, what I call territorial warfare. In other words, you've been dealing with some warfare that is really not about where you are, but where you're going. And so you've been in such a fight, such a battle, under such attack, and that attack is not about what you have seen, it's not about what you have explored, it's not about what you've seen before, but it's about what you have not seen. It's about where you have not gone. It's about the sudden promotion that God is going to cause to take place in your life. And the enemy wants to discourage you. He wants to block you. He wants to stop you. But he can't. And I want you to know that God is going to...
going to give you a divine intervention. He's going to interfere in the, the affairs of your situation and give you a sudden breakthrough. And so I want you to stay tuned because there's a sudden promotion coming your way. And on tonight with our guests that are here, they're going to speak to you and you're going to get instructions about the next place because you really are super graced for the next place. You, listen, 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 listen. Nothing can stop it. Nothing can hinder it. And so, really quickly, we're getting ready to go to Jesse L. Stevenson. God is going to do it. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Come on, can you clap your hands like this? Somebody shout, God is going to do it. Come on, shout, God is going to do it.
Somebody say, I know it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank God for Jesse L. Stevenson. Come on, give it up for him. God is going to do it. And I want you to know that with God, a promise spoken is a promise kept. And anything that God has promised you, you can take it to the bank. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, no matter what you've been through. If God has made a promise to you, you can stand on the promises of God. God is going to do just what he said. And I found out that anything that God said that he's going to do, he's actually already done it. When the Lord speaks a word to us and he tells us that I'm going to do a thing, he's actually showing us what already happened, what's in the script. He allowed you to peek in and see what's going to be. And I found out that God will show us the end of a thing at the beginning of a thing so that we can endure things, so that no matter what it seems like, no matter what you've been through, you can take it to the bank that God's word will prevail. I'm reminded of when my, my, my daughter... She wanted this little Elsa doll. And if anybody has a little daughter, you know, just whatever Disney puts out, you know, they just suck it all up. And she wanted this little Elsa doll because she had saw the movie Frozen. And why did her dad promise her, I'm going to get you an Elsa doll? Well, my daughter's anticipation went sky high. She was just looking out the window. And I'm like, what are you looking for? I'm looking for the mail. I said, okay, well, she's never looked for the mail before. But because she received a word from her father, it changed her expectation, and she began to look for things that she normally wouldn't look for. And so she began to go to the mailbox in the front of the house. I said, why are you going to the mailbox? She said, because Daddy said that he's getting me an Elsa doll, and he ordered it already. So she's checking out the mail. She's looking at the mailbox because she got a word from her father. That's how we are to be when God gives us a word. We should begin to look for what we didn't look for before. We should expect in places that we didn't expect before. And so, long story short, now her brothers have gotten on board with checking for the mail because her excitement extended to them. So now they're, they're checking the mail and they're looking for this box. And, 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 and the doorbell rang and it was a box and it was not the Elsa doll. And so now this time my daughter had ran to the door and she realized this was not Elsa. This was not the promise. And so she was upset and her brother was like, well, your doll is not there. So then I noticed that she was no longer looking out the window and she was no longer going to the mailbox because of the disappointment of going to the door and seeing a delivery that was not actually what her father promised her. I want to speak to somebody tonight who, who stopped looking, stopped expecting, stopped pursuing. Because when you believed God the last time, you didn't see what you thought you was going to see. But I want you to know that just because it had not come yet does not mean that it's not on the way. Well, when I spoke to her dad, he said, I definitely ordered the doll. It's on the way. It's going to be there. But she was no longer looking, and sure enough, suddenly about a day or two later, the doll showed up. But she was kind of casual about it and didn't really want to go to the door because she didn't want to get her feelings hurt. <laughs> Somebody needs to start looking again because the next knock, the next knock is going to be the one that you was expecting. The next knock on the door is going to be the one that God promised you. The next message that you're about to receive and the next manifestation is going to be just like the dream that God showed you. Well, you know what happened. It was that Elsa doll. And I tell you, my daughter ran to that phone. She called her dad up. Daddy, daddy, I got my doll. And she wanted to tell everybody about what her father had done. I want to tell you God is going to do just what he said he is going to do. And just because it didn't happen last month, it didn't happen last week, doesn't mean that it's not on the way. It's on the way. So I want you to get your praise shoes back on. I, I want you to take off those clothes of ashes, those clothes of doom, and put on your clothing of celebration, your clothing of expectancy. Come on here. Put that big smile on your face. Wake up in the morning and say, I expect God to do a miracle. Listen, let me tell you something. 
What God is doing in your life is happening in an incredible way. Don't allow the, the contradiction. You know, the contradiction is the ugly. The contradiction is the complete opposite of what God promised you. Don't allow that to fool you. Don't allow information to take away your revelation. Don't allow information, uh, information to take away your revelation. Your revelation from God trumped. Your revelation from God trumps any amount of information. Information they told you. Information you received in the mail. When God says, I've got a miracle for you. When God said, I've got a breakthrough for you. When God said, I'm giving you supernatural promotion. When the Lord says that your child is already all right. Your loved one is coming out of the hospital. You can go ahead and take that to the bank. You don't need the doctor to inform you. The revelation, come on here, trumps the information. And you need to turn around and tell the doctor, it's already all right. You need to go ahead and tell those bills, it's already all right. You don't need to tell that conflict, it's already all right. And so tonight we're just, and today we're just excited about what God is doing. You know, there's a demand for what's on the inside of you. And that's what your conflict is about. It is about the presence of God on your life. It is about the territorial breakthrough. God has given you sphere influence. And there is a place that God has called you to dominate in. And the devil doesn't want you to move into this next place of enlargement. He doesn't want you to go into this place of enlargement because when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. When the righteous rule, the people rejoice because when you rule, it's going to be governed by the authority of God. It's going to be governed by the principles and the precepts of God. And so your warfare has been about trying to stop the move of God, but he cannot stop you. And the new place that you are coming into, God is giving you spear dominance. There's a spear. There's a, there's a particular place that God, by his anointing and his great power, he has made you an expert in. You're going to be like Daniel 6.3 in the Message Bible, where it says, and Daniel completely outclass them. God has put you in a place where you're going to outclass, where you're going to be superior. You're going to dominate to the glory of God. You're going to execute flawlessly. You're going to get the job done. God has called you into a particular arena to show forth his glory. And that's why there's a sudden promotion that has taken place. And there, there is a demand for the gift of God that is on the inside of you. There's a demand for the anointing. People of God, People of God, come on. It's more than just shouting and jumping and, and flipping and, and, and speaking in tongues. But it is about going into all the world and preaching the gospel. It is about going into different arenas and modeling the behavior of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about, come on, ripping the runway for Jesus. Because when you're on the runway, you are modeling the behavior of Jesus. You are doing what he would do, saying what he would say. Come on here. So there is a demand for you to go in, hallelujah, to bring order where there is chaos, to bring habitation where there is a desolation, to bring peace where there is worry. And so this is your set time. The set time to favor Zion has come. And so God is giving you supernatural supply, not just for you to say, oh, look what I got. Look what I got. Oh, let, tell all my people to check me out. Look, I got overflow. But, 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 but rather, we are the owners of nothing and the stewards of everything. And God, that's right, the owners of, of nothing, everything that we have, it belongs to God for the believer. But God is going to give you overflow. He's going to give you supernatural increase uh, uh, upon your life because there is a demand and a need that needs to be met. And God is going to use you to meet that need. That's right. He's going to use you to meet that need. And so there's going to be sudden increase expected. God is going to cause lack to be overtaken with overflow and abundance. Get ready for it. Uh, your spirit influence is going to cause you to be able to speak for those that could not speak for themselves. You're going to be able to fight for those that cannot fight for themselves. Uh, you'll be able to say who's going to get the promotion and who's not because God has given you influence. God brings you into a place of enlargement, and that's why your expectancy has got to be great. You know, Ezekiel 47 and 12 talks about this supernatural supply, and it talks about how every day demand will be met and the demand will be met because the waters that come 
from the trees are, 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 are from the waters from the sanctuary, which means it is of a supernatural supply. So what supplies the trees? And you know uh, that we are referred to as trees of righteousness. Uh, we are supposed to bear fruit. But I want you to know that this next place that you're in, a barren fruit will be far greater than anything that you've ever seen before. The Lord shall cause you to be bountiful with fruit. The Lord shall cause you to be overflowing with fruit. The Lord shall enlarge your territory. God shall cause you to be a distribution center. Yes, he will. And so it says every month these, these trees yield new fruit every month which is this is not supposed to happen in the natural but because it is of supernatural element every month there will be fresh fruit i want you to get ready hallelujah because the lord is giving you supernatural supply the lord is causing you to be bountiful with and plenteous with goods the lord gives you overflow and i want you uh, those of you that are gathering in today it is no accident that you are here you are an emerging leader next level leadership is upon you next level leadership is upon you and God is just raising up some some no name people they, don't, they may not know your name but they will and maybe they won't but God has made you an influencer and an impactor but the next place that God has called you to to dominate in technology to dominate in government to dominate in media to dominate in the arts and, and different places that shape culture God is calling you to step up to the next place and, and so in that place it, it, it is called for to obey divine instructions. I want to encourage you today that are tuning in to sow and plant a seed. I'm talking about a seed on assignment. A seed on assignment that says, you know what? This seed is being planted with a harvest in mind. And somebody say, spear dominance. Spear dominance. Spear means your territory. Spear, spear means your department, your area, your domain. That's right. You're a dominion person with a domain. And so God is calling you to go in, hallelujah, and use your influence so that lives can be changed. I want to encourage you today to sow a seed of $47.12. Now what is that? Uh, for some of us, that's not even lunch. But it's a seed that can change anything. It's a seed that will go up the road and mark the spot. It's the seed hallelujah that is on assignment that will yield supernatural increase. $47.12. I want you to go to the phones now. God is going to speak to you. God is going to give you divine instructions on tonight. Plant that seed in the ground. I'm telling you, I sowed seeds and put seeds in the ground and I'm telling you, look like the season we're in now. It is a time when seed time and harvest has become one seed time and harvest has come together. Usually you're supposed to sow, then give it time and then there's a harvest. But I tell you, God has done something supernatural to the ground that when you sow, in the hour that you sow, in the season that you sow, you're going to see sudden increase and I want you to plant that seed. Get ready. Call the phones. Call the phones. Come on, come on, come on. Call the phones and call in and plant your seed. The number should be on the screen. Hallelujah. Watch this and we'll be back. Glory to God. Watch this. What's up, everybody? I'm Angie V, and on this segment of the Ministry Minute, we are highlighting Bishop Walter Scott Thomas of New Psalmist Baptist Church. Bishop Walter Scott Thomas Sr. has served as the pastor of the New Psalmist Baptist Church in Baltimore, Maryland since 1975. Under his leadership, the church has grown from 200 to more than 7,000 active members. Bishop Thomas has developed programs of evangelism, mission, and education. He is also a highly regarded executive and personal coach with over 30 years of experience in working with pastors, church leaders, and building effective ministry teams. Catch the church's national television broadcast, Empowering Disciples, which can be viewed right here on the Word Network. New normal. I hear people who get married talking about, I'm just trying to get my life back the way it was. Well, then you better get a divorce today because that's the only way you're going to get it back to the way it was. It's over, baby. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of the Ministry Minute. I'm Angie B. Make sure to follow us on all our social media platforms right here at the Word Network.
blessing. We've got a mighty man of God with us here on today. I want to introduce you to Pastor Jonathan Wichard. Come on. Let's give it up. Thank you, Dr. Medina. It's so good to be on Medina Pullins Live. Congratulations. Well. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Awesome. We're just delighted to have you here. And I want you to just tell our family a little about the Bridge Church. Okay. Uh, the Bridge Church. God, God uh, is doing some marvelous things just outside of Richmond in Powhatan, Virginia, through the Bridge Church. We have just opened our third campus in six years. <laughs> God is moving in a mighty way, and we're just thankful for the move of God, the glory of God. Yes. The Lord's been speaking to me about uh, a, a world, a world in chaos right. needs a church in revival. Yes. A world in disorder needs a church in order. If we've ever needed a time yes. where we need to come together in revival and link arms and push the kingdom yes. forward, we need it right now. Yes. We need a move of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And that's what we're here doing tonight, and we had Absolutely. to have you here with us when uh, Bishop Warren and I were discussing the show on, on, on um, a few weeks ago, and we were just saying we had to have you here because every time you've come to our church, you have brought the anointing, uh, yeah. the power of God, and, and, and I can just feel the tangible power of God on you right now. Pastor, what has God been speaking to you about? Will you share with us what God has given to you? Yeah, e even today, this afternoon, around 2.30 this afternoon, I felt the presence of God. I feel, I feel it in the atmosphere of this studio right now. My pastor says it best. The atmosphere of expectancy is the breeding ground yes. for your miracle. Yes, yes. And I, I, believe, I believe right now, as I'm looking into this camera, I believe that somebody is watching right now and somebody is about to be healed right. of colon cancer right yes. now. Yes. I felt that this afternoon at 2.30. Diverticulitis has got to go in the name of Jesus. And what the body of Christ, my God, I feel it. What the body of Christ needs right now is we need a sustained praise, a praise that shakes the gates of hell. We understand that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper, and every tongue that rises against us we shall condemn in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now, I like that right there, Pastor. Hallelujah. Because guess what? You can't, you can't, you can't create oranges in New York. Come on. Come because on. it's not hot long enough. Come on. But you take those babies out and plant them seeds out there in Florida. That's right. You can get a harvest of oranges. Get a sustained praise. You can get a sustained praise. Tonight, yes, let's get a sustained praise. That's what Somebody we need right needs now. to praise them right in their home. That's right. Somebody needs to get up in their living room and just go, go ahead and give God a sustained oh, yeah. praise. The body of Christ, we need to go up in a sustained praise. We need to, we, my God, hallelujah. I feel it in this room right now. See, for too long, for too long, the body of Christ has been operating in a feeling. Uh -huh. If we feel like praising, we praise. Right. If we don't feel like it, we don't. Right. If we feel like giving, we give. If right. we don't feel like it, we don't. If we feel like going to church, we go to church. If we don't feel like it, we stay at home. But I'm telling you, we being deceived by a feeling. We need to get out of a feeling and get in a praise and usher in the presence of God, a great awakening through a praise in this last day. My God. Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor. Praise him. Psalm 150. Psalm 150 said, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts according to his excellent greatness. Praise him on the psaltery and harp. Praise him on the timbrel and in the dance. Praise him on stringed instruments and organs. Praise him on high sounding cymbals. But let everything uh, that hath breath, uh, let every man, let every woman, let every boy, let every girl, let everything that hath breath, Praise ye the Lord. We need to sustain praise. Miracles, miracles, signs, and wonders are in the atmosphere of God. It's your time right now. Some of you need to run to your phone. Dial 1-8-855-730-WORD and get that $47.12 seed in the ground. 
it's a seed that's gonna produce a harvest. Somebody gotta get a sustained praise in the atmosphere of God. I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Praise him in your bedroom. Praise him in your kitchen. Praise him in your car. Praise him. Hallelujah. Praise him. Break the back of your enemy. Praise him. Praise will release your miracle. Praise him. says Judah I know Judah what praise will do. Judah meaning praise Judah shall be a hand yes. in the neck of your enemy oh yes the way you silence your enemy is you release a praise to God oh, yes. there's only two times to praise him that's when you feel like it and when you don't so you ain't Hey, you better give God praise in everything. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Somebody give him a praise up right now. You better praise him. There's a breakthrough right here. Yes, it is. You know what, Pastor? It says one of the sons of Judah is Hezron. And what Hezron means is weapon. Every time you praise God, you are releasing weapons of mass destruction on. on the enemy. Your praise is My a God. weapon. My God. <laughs> I dare you to praise him tonight. There's a fresh anointing. There's a fresh yes. anointing. One yes. of the other sons is Carmi, and that means anointing. Yes. I'm telling you, come on, the man of God yes. didn't ask us to praise. He gave yes. the command to praise That's Lord, right. have mercy. Yes, 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 yes. You praise him and watch God do it. You praise and see your miracle. You watch God turn it around. I dare you to pick him up and put him down. I dare you to raise your hand up. I dare you to lift up your voice and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, you know, Dr. Medina. Lucifer, Lucifer. It's the, already done. Yes, 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 yes. You don't need a monologue. You don't need, come on here, another reminder. It's already done. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. You need to just go ahead and praise him. Praise him because you believe it. Praise him because you know it. Praise him because you expect right. it. Praise him because you know it down in the city of your soul that it's already done. Praise him because you know he's worthy. I feel a breakthrough anointing in here. You know, Dr. Medina, Lucifer, Lucifer was created for worship. He was created for worship. Lucifer got tired of worshiping and desired to be worshiped. And when he stopped worshiping and desired to be worshiped, that got him kicked out of heaven. And the Bible says in Revelation 12 that he lost his place. Well, I got news for him. I'm in his place now that he lost. And every time I praise him, every time I praise God, I remind the devil of what he left in glory and he can't never go back. I wish somebody would get up in your living room right now, in your bedroom, and release a praise to God and let your adversary know you've taken his place. You've, you've been created to worship and bless the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open your mouth. 
very, very strategic. You started talking about information versus revelation. Yes. The devil wants to keep us locked in information yes. so he can keep us out of revelation. Right. The enemy wants to keep you trapped in the how, the what, the right. when, the where, yes. trying to figure out how it's going to yes. be done. The details. The details. Mm -hmm. But all we need is one word from God, and it's a word that says, have faith in God, and know when you speak to the mountains, they're going to be moved and cast into the sea. We don't need to worry about the information. All we have to worry about is having faith in God and understanding when we yes. do that, we win every single oh, yes. time. Oh, yes. My job is not to tend to the details, but to get a revelation from Almighty God. One word from God oh, yes. sets everything free, sets everything in order. Yes. I feel divine order in this room. I feel a breakthrough anointing in this room. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, it's like when he told them, listen, make this valley full of ditches. There had been no rain. Come on. And he said, but I want you to make some ditch. I want you to dig ditches. Yeah. I want you to act like the rain is coming. The rain didn't even come from the sky. It came from over come in the on. enemy's camp. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. See, God knows how he's going to get it to you. Yeah. God knows. See, sometimes we miss God because God didn't do it the way we wanted him to do it. But God's right. got ways that we don't even know about. That's right. God knows how to bless you. God knows how to get it to you. God knows how to multiply yes. your streams. Some of you, God yes, has been speaking to you, and he says, listen, I'm going to multiply your streams. And you steady looking at your job and, and how you can make it happen from there. But God says, don't look at your job. Look at me. Have don't faith. look at your bank account. Look at me. Have don't faith. look at the sickness. Look at God. Look Have at God. Faith. Look at God. Look to God and live. Look My to God. God and expect. Look to God and receive. Receive. Look to God and be healed. Look to God and get your joy yes. back. Get your strength back. Somebody's getting their strength back right now. Yes. You're getting your strength back yes. right now. The devil had you over in timeout. Had you over with Come the colors over your head in a bed of depression. But right now in the name of Jesus, the Spirit yes. of God raises you up out of that stupor. Hallelujah. Raises you up out of depression. Raises you up out of yes. fear. And causes you to stand on your feet again. Causes uh, you to believe again. Causes you to hope again, to stand again, to trust again, to pursue again. The power of God hits you now. The power of God fortify you now. Many, oh, Pastor. Many are the afflictions oh. of the righteous, but God delivers them out of them yes, all. Lord. Yes. There's a word in you, Pastor. Would you share it? Would you speak right into that camera? Yes. And share what God has given to you. Absolutely. Uh, somebody's breakthrough is in your mouth. Somebody's healing is yes. in your mouth. Yes. Hallelujah. I've, I've, I, felt, I felt impressed of the Holy Spirit, Dr. Medina. Out of Joshua chapter 1, just for a moment. Joshua chapter 1. It says, after the, after the death of Moses, the word of the Lord came to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, as, as, as I was reading that one time, I, I began to think, Dr. Medina, who else better knew that Moses was dead other than Joshua? So why would the word of the Lord come to Joshua and say, Moses, my servant, is dead? I believe the Holy Spirit gave me the revelation to the question I asked him by telling me that, that God wanted Joshua to know you don't have to be Moses. You don't have to act like Moses. You don't have to talk like Moses. You don't have to walk like Moses. You don't have to lead like Moses. Or you're going to end up dead like Moses. Joshua, you have your own anointing. You have an authentic anointing. And what the, what the Holy Spirit has been saying to me, this world needs an authentic anointing. We don't need a duplication of the past. We need something authentic that can usher in revival of miracle signs and wonders. And as I, as I, as I begin to read that, Dr. Medina, I, I read on down in Joshua chapter 5 where the angel came and stood over against Joshua and he said, the Lord is with you. And he told Joshua, he said, Joshua, loose thy shoe from off thy foot. Now, if, if, if we remember, he told Moses 
take your shoes off, take your sandals off, for the place you stand on is holy. But he told Joshua, loose thy shoe off thy foot. So for Mo Moses, it was both sandals. For Joshua, he said, loose thy shoe, singular, from off of thy foot, singular. So God began to stir in me. I, I began to ask the Holy Spirit, God, what are you saying in this? And he spoke to me and he said, he said, son, I need leaders who can not only get in my presence, but that can walk it out practically in the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, I'm not going to need faith when I get to heaven. It's all going to be fixed. So I need the kingdom now. I don't want to wait till I get to heaven to walk in the blessing and to walk in the favor and to walk in healing and walk in the manifestation. I want to walk in it right now. And so, and so what, I, what I want to say tonight is this, is this is what we need. We need leaders being developed that understand with one foot we stand in his presence and with the other foot we walk it out in the natural. If I can just stand up for just a second, if we, could, if we could just get this picture of what the Holy Spirit is saying. With one foot, I, I stand in his presence. And with the other foot, I walk it out in the natural. That's how the earth is going to see the glory of God is by us walking it out, living a practical life where we've been in his presence in one step, but we bring it to the natural in the other. And in the natural, when we face the devil, it won't take us all day long. We'll just put the other foot down and we'll be back in his presence. So every step, we're living out his presence here on earth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. We need, we need authentic leaders that can hear the voice of God but also live it out practically. See, a lot, of, a lot of men and women, Dr. Medina, they've got the practical administrative stuff, but they don't go in his presence. They think they're going to figure it out on their own. And then we got others that talk about how much they're in, their, in the presence of God, but they never bring it down to an earthly realm and walk it out in front of brothers and sisters who need it. So you have a world in chaos and we need a church in revival. And the only way we're going to have revival is when we come boldly into his presence but then say, I'm not, I'm not just going to be here. I've been called with a purpose and a destiny. I have a seed in my spirit that this earth needs. And I've been called to show forth the marvelous light of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to take his presence and I'm going to live it out practically. Yes. And I'm going to let the dead bury the dead. And I'm not going back. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. We bless God for Pastor Jonathan Richard. God bless you. Your word bless my life today. Oh, God. Bless God. You. Just want to live in your presence. My God. Jesus. Just want to live in your presence. Oh, my God. That's when I thought about what I'm hearing you saying, just one foot. Yeah. Don't want to move from your presence. Don't want to be in your presence, Lord. That's when you take that prayer closet with you. Absolutely. I'm not going to leave, Absolutely. God. But I got a work to do on the earth. Yes. But I'm going to stay in your presence. Yes, 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 yes. I just want to live in your presence. Oh, my God. Oh, God. It's what awesome. an anointing. Awesome. We're definitely going to have you back here again. Thank you Put so much. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. And thank God for Pastor God Jonathan Witchett. Hallelujah. God Come on. You. There's more that God has for you. Stay tuned. Stay connected. Watch this. Hallelujah. If gospel is what you want, the Word Network is what you need. Is what you need. We're constantly growing, constantly moving. The Word Network is the largest African-American religious network in the world. If you're on the ground, you can watch us on television or listen to us on the radio. If you're in the air, you can see us on numerous airlines in the sky, including Frontier, JetBlue, and United Airlines. United Airlines. 
and if you're on the go, you can stream us on every mobile device you have with our new and improved mobile app. We're on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And we broadcast live from all of your favorite conferences and events each and every year. The Word Network. The Word Network. Seen in over 90 million homes in the U.S. and 200 countries abroad and growing. And growing. We are the largest African-American religious network in the world. We are the Word Network. The Word Network. Bigger and better than ever. And better than ever. There's a move of God happening right now, and we're so glad about it. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we adore you. Jesus, we bless your name. We bless your name. We love you, Lord. We love the Lord with all of our heart. He's the air that we breathe. He's our love song. He's the king of our heart. He sits on the throne of our heart, and he rules, and he reigns, and we love him forever. He is our love song. We're just so delighted to have you here with us on today. And our next guest, I want to introduce him to you. I want you to put your hands together for none other than Bishop Oral Walters. Come on, my good friend. Thank you. Thank you for being with us, Bishop. Thank you. Such a pleasure to be here. Let me say congratulations on live. Awesome. Oh, thank you for being with us. We just see it as a tool to just love on Jesus even more and to just bring his message and his word and to communicate his heart. I want you to share with us about your ministry in Coral Springs. It's a mighty move of God happening over there. And I want you to share with our audience what's happening and how God is moving. Well, Live and Work Christian Center is a church in Coral Springs that loves to please God. And it's the people who are seeking the greater things in God. I am one of those who believes that every child of God, every believer, signs should mark their lives. It should be. It should be. I think the children of God and the people of God are living far below their privileges. And the Bible says that everyone who believes, we should be able to cast out devils. Yes. We should be able to lay hands on our own heads and, yes. and speak healing over our bodies. Yes. We should be able to talk to our children and cast devils out of them. We, wherever we go, we should bring change because we are the manifestation of God in the earth. Yes. One of the things I've come to understand is that God is not looking to dwell in buildings right. built by hands. Right. He's looking to dwell in buildings that his hands oh, built. Yeah which is our bodies. And the Bible says our bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost. Simply means wherever I go, I'm a temple. Wherever I go, the Spirit of God goes. And wherever the Spirit of God is, there's power for manifestation. Something got to happen wherever I show up. When they encounter us, when they encounter you, they encounter the kingdom. Yes. The kingdom of God yes. is within us. Yes. You are a man of faith, and I want you to talk to us about faith on tonight. Okay. What God has been sharing with you concerning the body of Christ, the next move, the next place, the manifestation. Speak to us, Bishop, on tonight. Hebrews 11, verse 1. It gives us the, the description of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God had me preaching and teaching and talking faith for I cannot remember how long but one of the things he shared with me because I wanted a deeper understanding of faith what is this faith things and he said faith is spiritual substance that has power to transform itself to become what I need when yes. I need it oh so no matter what I need where I need or how I need it faith is that substance that can transform itself to become just that. Yes. Amen. So with faith now, all things are possible. Yes. Glory yes. to God. Nothing oh, missing, powerful. nothing lacking, because if you have faith, there is power for transformation. So in other words, my faith becomes. Your faith becomes whatever you yes. believe in God for. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, that three things are always going to remain. Faith, hope, and love. 
three things. And hope now creates an expectation. Mm -hmm. But faith brings it to pass. Right. Right. Amen. Faith and hope is about future expectation. Hope knows the potential of the future, but faith knows the reality of the future. Yes. In other words, hope is an expectation of future events, and faith is the knowing of future events. Yes. Hope knows that the positive events can happen, but faith knows that the positive events will happen. Right, right, right. Hallelujah. Hope creates the possibility. Faith creates the reality. What well, God has been sharing with me that too many people are stuck at hope right. and never crossed over into faith. Mm. You see, they are confused of what hope is and what faith is. Okay. Hope allows you to see something. Yes. Faith caused that thing to come into reality. Yes. And so we can't stay, we can't keep on saying, I'm going to be healed. We must begin to say, I am healed. Yes. Uh, we can't yes. continue to say, I'm going to yes. be prosperous. I've got to say, I am prosperous. Watch the verb. I am healthy. I am wealthy. And yes. I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You see, hope continuously talk about what's yes. coming to pass. Yes. But faith says it's already done. All right. God already has done it. It's already done. I'm living in the happening realm. What God did is already in the done realm. I just need it to happen for me right here, right now, because it's already done. Hallelujah. Did it's you catch that? Done. I'm living in the happening realm. Yes. Not it's getting ready, not it's on the way. It's here. It's, it's here. Done. It's happening. It's now. Now faith. Ooh, now That's faith. what you're talking about. Now faith. Now faith. Hallelujah. It's a done deal. God's realm, the spiritual realm, I call it the done realm. Yes. Everything that God done. has provided for us, he already provided. Yes. The Bible said He, everything that pertains to life and godliness, God already has provided it. He's not just now waiting to bless you. It's like, yes. no, God already knew what you're going to yes. go through, what you're going to experience. He already knows right where you're at in your life. And he's already provided everything you need by faith. I've got to connect with what's already done for my life. He's waiting on us to operate in our now faith. He's waiting on us Because to anything connect. he's going to do, he's already done it. Already done. It's already on the timeline. Already Hallelujah. Done. We're in the happening place. Yes. We're in the place where it's happening now. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to go ahead and begin to declare, begin to speak, begin to say it in your home, begin to speak it over your family and say, my daughter is healed. My breakthrough is here. My turnaround is here. Hallelujah. Miracles are happening right now. Deliverance is happening right now. That's right. Somebody's going back to the doctor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you go back to the doctor, you're going to find out that God has already done it. Speak Hallelujah. to us, Bishop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith knows, faith knows God's will for your life is a done deal. Faith knows. It's, a done, it's done already deal. done. Faith causes it to happen in the present realm. Yes. We can only experience God in the present. We can't do it in the past. We can't do it in the future. It must happen right here, right now. If we're going to get anything that's ours, it must happen in the now. Yes. Hallelujah. Nobody wants to wait till tomorrow for your healing. Uh -huh. Y'all got to hear me. Nobody wants to wait till tomorrow for your deliverance. I need it now. And so faith is a now thing. Faith is saying, it's already done. My healing is already done. Jesus, uh, he was already wounded for my transgression. He was already bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace is upon him. And by his stripes, I am healed. It's a done deal. My healing is already done. I just need what's done to happen. Y'all got to get this. What's done to happen because this is the happening realm. This is the happening realm. It's already done. It's already done. It's a done, done deal. And so our expectancy, so then instead of just asking God, do this, do that, we should just be thanking him, would you say? Yeah, Lord, and just praising you. him and just giving thank him glory because it's already, it's already done. done. Hallelujah. I feel that. It, and, and, and that's where we are right now. God is just moving in such a mighty way in the body of Christ. This is the happening time. This is the manifestation time. This is why sudden promotion is happening. This is why uh, people are receiving multiple wealth streams just Ooh. like that. This is why breakthrough is happening right now because God is moving by his spirit. Spirit. This thing is already done, and he's looking at anybody that will just have faith in him. 
He says, you have the faith. I've already got it done. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. This is the miracle realm. This is the supernatural. This is the incredible. Ooh. This is, come on here, what Ooh. you've never seen before, Ooh. what you've never walked yeah. in before. Lord, Jesus, have mercy. Suddenly. This, this is the suddenly, that's right, the happening realm. Oh, it's Lord happening God. just like that. Uncommon things. Aren't? Would you say that this is the time that uncommon things are happening, supernatural things are happening? Uh, what people have never seen before is happening, and it's happening right now. The Holy Ghost had constrained me because I would say, you know, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. He said, stop saying it's coming and say it's here. It's here. Hallelujah. It's here. It's Hallelujah. here. And it's here when? It's here right now. It's here right now, Lord Jesus. Because what will happen is, Bishop, it will change our state. It will change how our posture and how we begin to look at things. Because when we look at it like we know it's already done, you got to start saying thank you. You have to start saying, oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Thank you, Jesus. It's at the threshold. Come on, Bishop. It's already done. Yes, yes. For 12 years, we've been praying the same prayer. Right. Though my beginning was small, mm -hmm. my latter end shall greatly increase. And for 12 years, I did not hear from God about that. Mm. But one Sunday, as I stood up to preach a few weeks ago, God says, you're living in that time right now. Hallelujah. And so I thank God for this opportunity. Yes. And this is God working it out, bringing it into the now. Hallelujah. Revelation, expectation, yes. realize. Yes. The promises of God must become our reality. Oh. And we cause that to happen by thinking and believing God for the now things. Yes. Stop saying tomorrow. Stop saying next week. And I'm going to begin to say it's happening right here, yes. right now. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. We can't wait any longer. Everything that you need, it's all it's already done. Yes. It's already done. And, I, and we spoke this at the beginning of the show. And what many people are experiencing is that territorial warfare, that warfare to try to convince you that God has not done what he's already done, that, that, that you're not going to see manifestation. Uh, but I'm telling you, you better expect it because it is already done. Your breakthrough is here. Your deliverance is here. What you've been praying for, manifestation manifestation time is here. This is the time for you to move with the dream that God has put on your heart and it takes faith to do it. We brought this man of God here uh, on tonight because he's a man of faith, because he's an expert on faith and nothing happens without faith. It, 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 everything that we do, everything that we're going to see manifested is going to be because and by faith. Our great heroes were able to accomplish and do by faith. Well, guess what? Guess what? There's a hero in you. There's a hero in you. And, and this is the time that God will cause you to, to, to be inspired and God causes you even right now uh, to have Holy Ghost inspiration. You are operating and functioning under a divine think tank. Yes, you are. The Holy Ghost influences your thoughts and the very thing that you think shall come to pass. This is the time that the dream that God gave you is going to manifest. This is the time to pursue. This is the time to march forward. This is the time to put the proposal in. This is the time, uh, uh, that, that thing that you waited on and you sat on and you delayed on. This is the time that the days are no longer prolonged, but it is manifestation time. This is the time that God releases the genius in you because of his presence that lives in you. This is the time for the takeover. This is the time for the takeover. This is the time for domination. This is the time that you will go into the waste places and inhabit them. This is the time that you will decorate nations and neighborhoods and cities this is the time that you will go in with the anointing of the repairer this is the time that you will go in as a Mr. Fixit a Mrs. Fixit, Mrs. Fixit under the anointing of the Holy Ghost because it is not you doing the work but the power of God working through you this is the time yes woman this is the time yes man that God is sending you in to repair the mess up this is the time that God is blending you in with supernatural strategies this is the time that God is bringing you in to solve problems, to answer the hard questions. And, and by faith, you're going to do it. By faith, you're going to march in. By faith, this anointing right now is moving upon you. And no, you don't need to run here, there, and everywhere trying to get another confirmation. This is your confirmation. Move forward. The anointing on you, the move is on you now. It's time to make a move. It's time to step forward. It's time to be bold about it. That anointing to repair is on you. That anointing to build is upon you. That anointing to decorate is upon you. That anointing to establish is upon you. Right now, right now, right now. I call forth the genius in you. I call forth the anointing, hallelujah, that is on the inside of you, that your city has a demand for, that the nations have a demand for, that the children in the neighborhood have 
looking at whoever you think is a celebrity in the kingdom and you are ignoring what God has placed on you and you're calling it insignificant but it's not insignificant it is a part of God's perfect plan and we need you to rise up and stand up and be uniquely who God has called you to be I want you to run go to that cone hallelujah I told you God has given you spirit dominance He's giving you spirit dominance. He's giving you a domain. He's giving you territory. He's giving you a particular area, an arena for you to show forth his power, his power, his grace, his glory, for you to model the behavior of Jesus Christ all in. Don't let no trouble stop you. Don't let challenges stop you. They did it just there to build your muscle. Hallelujah. You've been qualified by God. You've been approved by God. You've been given a divine approval from him. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you. Go and sow that seed. Plant that seed because there's a supernatural supply. I feel the presence of God right here. Hallelujah. No more delay. Your set time is here. The anointing of God overflows on you. The presence of God, hallelujah, causes you to come forth. The presence of God, there's a fresh wind. There's a fresh wind coming on you right now. The wind of God is blowing you into heights that you've never known before. The wind of God is taking you to a place that you've never been before. Let him take you there. Let him take you there in the spirit. Let him take you there. Hallelujah. Plant your seed. I feel the presence of God. God has given you a divine approval. Hallelujah. No matter how tempting it is, no matter how tempting it is, don't take on anybody else's identity. Be you who God has called you to be. Hallelujah. No more playing around having competitions in church for spots and places. But this is time for you to make, hallelujah, your mark for the kingdom. This is time for you to influence. Sow your seed. $48.12, I want you to go and plant that seed in the ground. Put it in the ground. It is a seed on assignment. Hallelujah. Because suddenly, right now, like Pastor Oral said, hallelujah, it's right now. You are in the place of happenings. You are in the place where it's happening, and it's happening right now. Bishop, we thank God for you. Your faith has stirred us up on tonight. Oh, come on. Let's thank God for Bishop Walters on tonight. Right now, Pastor Jesse Stevenson, let it overflow. This is my song. Can you lift your hands right where you stand, everybody? Right where you are. We're moving into a season of overflow. Come on, lift your voices all over the place. Father, we love you, Lord. simple song that said There's something coming over me Hallelujah. Something that I can't explain mm -hmm. It's powerful and majesty And overflowing rain Come on, why don't you try it? Something coming over me There's something coming over me Come on, try it. Something that I can't explain. Say it. Something that I can't explain. That's it. It's powerful and majesty. It's powerful and majesty. That's it. Come on, say it. An overflowing rain. An overflowing rain. This part right here says I feel an anointing. I feel an anointing. I feel an explosion. I feel an explosion. It's in the air. Say it. It's in the air. Say it. It's in the air. That's it. I feel an anointing. Come on, try it. I feel an anointing. I feel an explosion. Feel an explosion. Where is it? It's in the air. See? In, the air. in the atmosphere. In the atmosphere. Oh, I like this part. It says, "There's something that's surrounding me. There's something that's surrounding me. It's overwhelming my soul."
word and move yes. move because God has something great that he is doing through you we're excited about it well our next guest is the love of my life the father of all five of my children four sons and one daughter that's right he's my best friend and I'm delighted that he is here with me tonight he is the pastor of United Nations Church International with several locations. Honey, I'm thankful that you're here. Receive tonight, Bishop Oren K. Bullen Sr. Y'all are awesome. <laughs> hey, Medina, this audience is rocking tonight. Oh, aren't they amazing? <laughs> They are awesome. They, they are, they are doing an awesome job. Thank y'all so much tonight. And your show, I'm telling you, there is the power of God is released every time you come on the air. And I'm so proud of you, honey. You're doing a fantastic job for the kingdom. I just sit back and go, man, you ain't no joke, baby. I love you. And um, I'm so proud of you. I love you. I'm feeling real mushy right now. Oh, uh, we mushing up now. Oh, my goodness. Well... I know that God has given you something, and there's this incredible book that I was even shocked that you were going to um, write about it. You've been pastoring now for over 20 years, and I've been blessed to be your help meet in this great assignment that you have. And seeing behind the scenes and um, the different things that go on when you walk in leadership, uh, the attacks, the things that you have to deal with, and um, I've heard you preach many messages that inspired and actually preached me into a whole lot of stuff that I'm doing right now. You know, Bishop will preach, and you just believe you can. And so by the time you think about it, you already just leaped. <laughs> <laughs> the anointing on your life is like that. But I, I did not think that you would ever write this book, yeah. even though I knew that you were experiencing this. And so I know that's going to help a lot of people. As tonight we were talking to the body of Christ or today about walking in your assignment and stepping into that place where God has given you spear influence, a place that he's called you to lead in. And where there is favor, there is also hatred. Wow. There is wow. also attack. Wow. And so you wrote a book. That's getting ready to be released. Yes, yes, getting ready to be released, released now. Uh, December first. Yes. And tell book, us about it. The book is entitled "The Leader's Seven Deadly Venoms," and my subtitle is 
conquering 21st century opposition. Yes. This, this book deep. takes a stand for leaders. Right. And like you said, uh, 20 years pastoring, um, five locations uh, in North America. And um, I've learned a lot. Uh, the first thing my dad told me when I started pastoring, you know, when, when you didn't want to go and you were like, nah, right. this ain't God. And, and I said, well, if, if the pastor gives us release, we going, remember? Yes. And we went for the pastor and got proper release from the pastor. Well, Let me say that again, proper release. Yes. I didn't want to go through that, y'all. <laughs> Wanted to serve at our local church. But what did my what dad did told me? Say? He said, he said, uh, he said, son, I believe that God is calling you. God be with you. Right. And he said, whatever you don't know, the people will teach you. Yes. 20 years later, my message to my dad, I hope he's watching tonight. The people's lesson hurts like hell. Explain. Huh. Well, let's talk about venom. Why well, do you call the seven, the leader seven deadly venoms? Because venom, venom is released from backlash. Okay. Sometimes people come with their own agenda, their own purpose, not really a kingdom purpose, but a personal agenda. And whenever that's not fulfilled, sometimes the leader is the one that has to tell the person the truth about where they are in their heart. And, and sometimes when you express the truth to people and tell them the truth about themselves, not all the time do they want to hear it. And then here comes backlash. So when you're bold enough to speak the truth to help someone grow, the leader may experience retaliation, Major. backlash. Well, backlash really Major is the appropriate retaliation. word. Yeah, it's actually backlash, yes. Because when, because, you know, uh, when you are a leader ordained by God, you know, see, we were not uh, hired. Right. We were called. <laughs> There's a difference between preachers that are hired and ones that are called. We work for Jesus. Yes. Yes. And when you work for Jesus, sometimes the truth is just raw. Yes. But when you hire, sometimes you have to be all skillful. Right. right. But, but when you work for Jesus, sometimes Jesus, you know, Jesus rebuked people. Right. And, and, and how can you be a leader without correcting people? How can you be a good leader without giving people proper instruction? How can you be a good leader without challenging someone to their next level? And sometimes when that happens, the leader gets backlash. So in my book, I'm going to release the, the, the danger of the seven deadly venoms that comes against leadership. Wow. Of course, Miriam and, and, and Aaron, uh, they, they felt they were, God speaks to them like God spoke to the leader. Right. There is a difference. There is a difference. You have a vision. The leader has the vision. If your a vision is not in line with the vision, you will cause division. And so that's why we got to be very careful because God hasn't ordained some of the pastors that have been out there and just, they're just going, you flying and you flying high, but really you are an unidentified flying object if you haven't been launched properly from some place. Right. And that's the problem. People get on the internet right now and they start preaching. People get happy not realizing where is the origin of that spacecraft? <laughs> where did you originate from? And that's right. the first thing that leaders, that, that, that ordained leaders must be. Yes. You must be launched from someplace. Yes. People yes. want to be able to backtrack your lineage yes. and see where you come from, who laid their hands on you, how faithful were you when you were there. Yes, yes. Where did you serve at? Where did you serve at? Were you faithful? Were you faithful? Amen. And, and you know, and there's another uh, uh, venom uh, that I'm, I'm going to talk about. Okay. It's Potiphar's wife venom. And, 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 and that's a very dangerous venom because that's the, the authority attraction venom where, okay. where, where once you, you take a, a, a position of authority, of leadership, automatically there's an attraction. Yes. Whether you're the store manager, the supervisor, whatever it is, right. there are certain spirits that are, uh, that are simply attracted, not because you look good, right. not because you're all wonderful. So some of us, some preachers got to get out your head a little bit. Sometimes it's all about the authority right. that brings about the attraction. Because the scripture clearly says in Genesis 39, after all these things that happened to Joseph, then Potiphar's wife was like, oh, man, this guy looks good. Yes. <laughs> so are you looking good because you really look good or are you looking good because the anointing is good? <laughs> and I want to tell you, the anointing is good. So what ends up happening, you know, Potiphar's wife comes on to him, but Joseph has so much standard that he said, I can't. I can't sin against God, right. and I can't sin against my leader, my yes. boss. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then venom is released because she grabs his clothes, 
and then, ready for this, tells a lie, the complete opposite of what really went down. That girl was poison. <laughs> and, and I want to tell you something. You can have, you can rebuke people in love and tell right. people the truth about themselves right. and, and give them the, the 411, mm -hmm. but once they walk away from your presence, they can make up any story. Right. And that's what I've learned down through the years. Yes. That, that, that a lot of people, they walk out the room, you tell them this, this, and that, they walk out, something else happened. But yes. I come to tell you tonight, they got the rumor, but God's got the record. And sometimes that attack is because of the integrity. Because, because she was angry because he... he he How would you? not do it. I'm, I'm the boss lady. I'm the first lady. I mean, you know, it, so his, his attack or the lie that she told on Joseph was because he wouldn't. Yeah. And that's some of the things that leaders go through it, because you have a standard, because you wouldn't be down with the mess, because you tell the truth, because you're sold out to God, you can really be attacked for that. Absolutely. And you're not ready for this? The next venom is this. Um, David's men. Mm -hmm. Davis went in battle after battle after battle. But then one day, he got to Siglag. Yes. And then all of their goods, their wives were taken away from them. And guess what? His own men that praised him before did turned at him and said they were ready to kill him and stone him. Okay, see, everybody's cool as long as the team is winning. Right. But when the team is losing, yes. you got to find a reason why the team is losing. Right. Right. And usually it's because, according to people, uh -huh. the leader. You, you claiming your church ain't growing fast enough. I'm going to ask you a question. When was the last time you invited somebody? You claiming things ain't going the way they need to go. Well, 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 well are you an asset to your ministry? Are you an asset to your leader? Or are you a liability? Are you a complainer? Are you a shaker and a mover? Right. See, this, is, see, see th this book just doesn't bless the, 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 the leaders, protect the leaders and cover the leaders, but it also puts pressure on the people. Some of us need to know how to pray for our leader. Right. Cover our leader. Yes. Know our leader's battles. Know their warfare. Know our leader's warfare. Yeah. If you're going to be down with me, you need to know Oren Pulling's warfare. Yes. You need to know how the enemy attacks your leader. This book is going to expose the enemy and show the attacks that come with leadership. And then, of course, then of course but here's the, the major, uh, one major uh, uh, venom. It's Herodias venom. Herodias, um, you know, marries mm -hmm. her the king, which he formerly was, was, was with Herod's brother. John the Baptist rebukes Herodias and, uh, and Herod right. the king, all right, because right. how dare you be with your brother's old chick, <laughs> right? And, and, and she held on to it. So one day her daughter dances mm -hmm. for King Herod. Herod, Herod said, well, well, what do you want? She remembered that rebuke from John the Baptist and said, I want the head of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was beheaded only because mm -hmm. he told the truth right. about Herodias and Herod the king. Had, she, had he not told, told the truth, he just would have been the regular puppet right. Like, right. Like, like most preachers have right. become. Right. They're saying stuff God didn't tell them to right. say. They're appeasing people's ears. Yes. Sometimes yes. when God is on your life, you got to release that tough word. Yes. And when that tough word comes, people don't like it. Yes. Yes. Oh, glory to God. But I'm so glad the good thing, and, 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 and here's the thing that gets on my nerves more than anything. All right. Because I'm going to deal with a scripture in this book. Okay. And the scripture is uh, Isaiah 54 and 17. Right. Uh, no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. We all love that scripture. I see people yes, on my timeline. Do. No weapon. They just finished dancing in the club. Woo. No <laughs> weapon formed against me shall prosper. Just finished being up with somebody and just finished on vacation with your, with your boo and you ain't married. Uh -huh. And they get on Facebook, no weapon a week later, no weapon, how about shy, formed against me shall be able to prosper. But you need to read the rest of that verse 17. Tell us about it. The rest of it says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Oh, yes. So uh, um, uh, I want y'all to share this tonight. Um, uh, uh, wake up call. This scripture doesn't apply to everybody. Because, because this is what God told Jeremiah. God told Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 when he called him. said, uh -huh. Jeremiah, listen, this day I set you over all these highest officials in the land. Mm -hmm. I've made you a fortified city. I've surrounded you with yes. divine protection. Yes. That the enemy may get on top of the wall to get at you, but he will never overtake yes. you and completely bum rush yes. you. I set Hallelujah. you over the over. land. 
That spirit. The kings, yours. the princes. That's everybody. your spirit, That's Daniel. It. That's your territory. That's your domain. That's why you don't go around minding everybody else's business. You got enough business to handle in your sphere, in your domain, in your territory. Speak to us about that, Pastor, that when God has given you that bishop, how should you move forward when you're under attack, when it looks like the enemy has an advantage over you? Share with us that promise. I've had major attacks in ministry. I have attacks from people that left my ministry, that I've had to put out the ministry, that I told. Sometimes you got to tell people you got to go. You don't want to do it. You know, you, you want to save everybody. But some people are just not a sign for you, Pastor. And, and, and pastors got to realize that sometimes you got you to let it go. You got to know when to fold, know when to walk away. And you got to know when to end some relationships. And sometimes I've ended them, then I got backlash as a result of ending the relationship. You know, and, and also, you know, then, then you got the Internet. So that's why I said the 21st century warfare is right. much different from my great-grandfather and grandfather yes. and father who are pastors. Yes. Now anybody can get an audience. They just get on Facebook Live. Guess what my pastor did to me today? You know, you know, so, 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 so the way to engage the enemy is a little unique from in the past. Okay. Um, I've engaged a blogger that kept blogging on me and blogging this and blogging that. So what I did was I wrote my own blog and I blogged the blogger. And I didn't put it in, and I didn't put it on my social media page because I don't want to give him my following. I dropped it right, the bomb right where he's at. And sometimes when you deal with the 21st century level of warfare, you got to deal and take technology to higher levels than the levels that the enemy's right, using. Right. And, and, and every situation is unique, and God will give you divine strategies. And one thing I've, I've seen in your life, time after time, time again, God always causes you to end on top. He always, I'm, I'm serious. I've Just seen it, time, it over right? and over again. God always brings you out. He always brings you through. He always leaves you standing. I remember when you had your hemorrhagic stroke in 2011. Some people were celebrating too soon. Celebrating the fact that they thought that you died. I call oh God, but God, you know, I believe that God stands back sometimes and says, ha ha. And he allows he allows us to be in a situation, you as a leader, you're in a position that you're in. He allows it to, to look like, yeah, you know, man. you're down for the count. <laughs> you're me. not going to get up this time. And God himself watches and say, me. now look at my work. Look at what I'll do. Look me. at how I'll raise them up. I call them false prophecies of condemnation. My church was been supposed to be closed. Right. My location was, was not supposed to be open according to the, some of the false prophets that walked away and, and said, this is going to happen next. There's, let me tell you something. There, there is no condemnation against those who are in Christ Jesus. Yes. Yes. While they prophesy lying, keep on building. Right. Right. <laughs> While they're talking about you, come on, get ready to open up another ministry. Yes. And for all of those that lied on us five, in our fifth year in ministry and in our tenth year in ministry, here it is 20 years later five locations getting ready to open up another one somebody better shout hallelujah you better know that your life is in the hand of God and if God be for you then who can be against you greater is he that's inside of us than he that's in the world oh yeah that's right no weapon that's for is going to prosper because you have God on your side not because we're perfect but in Christ hallelujah he gives us a perfect work and he gives us a perfect anointing on how to, come on, strategize and move to new levels in spite of your warfare. Pastor, I want to encourage you tonight. Don't come off the wall. Keep building what they're talking about me. Keep building what they're lying on me. Keep building what, they, what they're doing, working to see behind the scenes. Keep building. Because after a while, God's going to show all your enemies who he's with. And when God shows them that he's with you, it's not going to matter. Because at the end of the day, Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for the good. Just touch them out in your house and tell your neighbor, all things are working for the good. It's working for your good. They meant it to destroy you. They meant it to hold you back. They meant it to close the doors of your church. But when God is on your side, he will cause you to outdo and overdo 
the expectation of your enemies. Ah, uh, tell your neighbor, you're going to overcome the expectations of your enemies. They don't expect you to be blessed. But get ready, get ready. Your blessing is coming in spite of public opinion. Oh, what matters is what God said. His report says you're free. His report speaks growth. His report speaks healing. His report speaks supernatural development. Ah, God is for you. God is for you. Everybody trust yourself now and say, God is for me. God is for me. God is for me. God is for me. They got the crowd, but you got God. They got the crowd, but you got God. special presentation brought to you by the friends and partners of the Word Network all over the world. For your love gift of $15 or more, the Word Network will send you this beautiful golden crown keychain covered with sparkling rhinestones and a pink gem in the center. Crowns are mentioned throughout scripture, from anointing kings to Jesus wearing a crown of thorns on the cross, symbolizing royalty, honor, status, consecration, and position. Isaiah 62 3 says, You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Carry this elegant keychain as a wonderful reminder of your faith. Order one for yourself, your family, and friends. It's a perfect gift for any occasion. 
Call now. Call 855-730-WORD. That's 855-730-9673. Thank you for supporting the Word Network. Because of your generous love gifts, we're spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and hurting world. of hearing the Word of God, hearing the Word of God. I told you before that we are on a spiritual mandate that I have from the Lord to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. And it seems like today people are so busy doing whatever it is that they do and they're playing a balancing act with with their life and the enemy knows it and he knows that if you are empty he wins the scripture teaches us that when a spirit has gone out of the house he goes and he wanders uh, seeking rest and he says unto himself i will return back to that house which 